Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here today uh, to talk about the uh, release uh, by Governor Christie's administration of his uh, long-awaited report on the technology uh, associated with Lisa's Law. Uh, I have to begin by acknowledging my extreme disappointment and frustration with the administration at his long-delayed release of this proposal. The one aspect of it that I think was actually uh, positive about the proposal is it acknowledged something that myself, Assemblyman Dancer, and our other sponsors already knew that the technology exists and can move forward. The subjective nature of the analysis, quite honestly, and in my opinion, the, the lack of thorough research that is associated with this report should be embarrassing to the governor and to the attorney general. Quite frankly, a couple passages in there I found distasteful when it sought to uh, link a victim as can someone who can manipulate a GPS uh, device in order to use it as a retaliational, retaliation tool. Um, to me, as we mark October's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I can think of no more unconscionable thing that one could even say to blame the victim or use the victim in some way as a scapegoat for the use of this technology. What disappoints me a great deal is many of us, knows that many of us know we asked a very specific series of questions of the governor when the report was two weeks late, let alone six months. We asked the governor to let us know who are the members of this task force that will be reviewing this, the criteria they will be using. This report, this 18-page report that I received in my office at quarter of eight last evening, um, subsequently after our press uh, advisory was announced that we were going to have this conversation, is, is the height, in my opinion, of hypocrisy. It does no service to the people of this state. It does no service to the victims of domestic violence. It does no service to the hard work of the men and women of the New Jersey legislature who spent a year plus going over and having countless meetings on this topic. As a piece of comparison, a simple Google search found a report issued by the U.S. Department of Justice uh, published by the U.S. Department of Justice, a 246-page report. This 246-page report on the vex of the very same conversation that this uh, report from the AG's office, the report on the availability of the appropriate technology to monitor domestic violence offense. When you look at this report, not only does it refute various key components of what the Attorney General says, it almost makes it seem to me that the Attorney General and whomever was part of this mysterious, mystical task force, did not even read the original bill and look at it in context to be able to answer some of the many questions that they have purported to say cannot be answered in their report. Ladies and gentlemen, this frustrates me to know in, as we mark October again as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, that we are continuing to not do more to turn victims into survivors. And that, for me, is the fundamental mission of why we stepped on this uh, journey to try and get this done. Um, my good friend, Assemblyman Ron Dance, who could not be with me today, we had a very brief conversation about this topic this morning. And in the course of our conversation, he said to me, Troy, I, I need to, to understand this better, but I want us to press forward. The Assemblyman and I are today reintroducing Lisa's Law. We will be reintroducing it, the same version that passed the state legislature to, uh, in, in December. Um, that the governors chose fit to conditionally veto. We are going to press the administration now that they know and have acknowledged what we have known all along, that the technology exists. We are going to press them to make that a reality. In my world, there is no turning back from this uh, endeavor that we are on, and we're going to do everything possible to make sure this happens. With me today uh, from Providence, Providence House is my friend Mary Petro, who will have some brief remarks. Thank you, everyone. As the Associate Director of Providence House, which is the Domestic Violence Services of Catholic Charities, uh, we serve Burlington and Ocean Counties. It's my pleasure to be here today to kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Domestic Violence Awareness Month uh, actually started in the 1980s as a way to raise awareness about domestic violence and to rally community support. Nearly 30 years later, I stand here as the witness of the transition from victim to survivor of thousands of children who have come through the safe house and the outreach counseling programs at our at Providence House. These children have been so deeply traumatized by the violence that they have endured and the violence that they have witnessed. Through creative arts and individual counseling and group counseling, 
we are able to educate them that abuse is never okay. What's more important is that these children over the past 30 years are now the adults in our community. These are our neighbors, these are our teachers, our police officers, our community leaders. These children are now a very big part of our community and were and are worth every bit of our effort to do that kind of education and awareness. So are the adults who have come to us of every age, gender, ethnic background, economic class, uh, religious preference, sexual orientation. They have also all made that brave transition. Lisa was one of the many voices in New Jersey that have been silenced tragically forever. It's our responsibility to be their collective voice. There is a proverb that I often reflect back on, and it says that a stick all by itself is frail and vulnerable, but when bundled with other sticks, becomes unbreakable. Victims of domestic violence in New Jersey are like those vulnerable single sticks, and they need more than just service providers, law enforcement, and legislators standing next to them. We need places of worship, we need our schools, our businesses, our community groups, our, our neighbors to join in the stand against violence. Our reaction to victims and our lack of action against perpetrators of violence just perpetuates this generation, generational nature of this crime. As a community, we need to understand that the children of today are our leaders tomorrow, and we need to show them the right way. There are domestic violence events happening throughout New Jersey in every single county this month. And so, of course, I encourage everyone to participate in their local activities. But also, there is a statewide campaign called Purple Thursday that's going to be on October 23rd, where every individual business school is asked to wear purple to raise awareness and stand united. I think that New Jersey needs to demonstrate without question that we stand together to promote peace in this community. Thank you, Mary. Uh, we were uh, unfortunately not able to be joined today by Tara Delorme from the Lisa's Life Foundation. She actually was in a bit of a fender bender, um, actually in our parking garage, unfortunately. So I hope no one's car here has gotten dinged. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in closing, just, just want to say this, and from Mary's perspective, as an advocate and someone who's helped me a great deal, not just in the formulation of Lisa's Law, but its continuing efforts, we were proud to work with Mary and Providence House in numerous uh, state shelters around, uh, excuse me, shelters around our state to find an additional $2.24 million in the FY15 budget that was in a legislative addition that stayed in the budget. I was proud to be one of the sponsors of that bipartisan resolution. Um, and we know that'll go to help uh, works like Providence House and all the things that they do.